During the height of the Industrial Revolution, the once peaceful rural town of Merthyr Tydfil in South Wales, fast became the global epicentre of the world's iron trade. Workers from all over Europe came to the town with the promise of riches beyond their wildest imaginings. The population grew rapidly, and by the midpoint of the 19th century, it was more than Cardiff and Swansea combined. Then, recession hit, forcing the colliers into slave-like working conditions. The truck system, a financial model creating a complete monopoly and stranglehold over the town's economy was set up. Instead of paying the workers in money, they were paid in tokens. It could only be redeemed in shops owned by the authorities, therefore enslaving the workforce and their families to the town. With the spiralling costs of living and the ever-growing uncertainty around work, the miners were forced to take out debt in order to feed, clothe and home their families. If the lenders were not paid back in time, the bailiffs from the court of request were called in to seize whatever goods of value the workers had left. Starvation, disease, pestilence were all too commonplace. Children under the age of five suffered an 85% chance of dying. The workers needed to escape. They needed to change. And they realised it was only through the strength of numbers in unwavering solidarity that they would ever secure that change. And so, unions began forming up and down the country. Then, on June 3rd, 1831, tens of thousands of angry workers descended on the town. They met with their masters and demanded reform. The Iron Masters, William Crawshay II and John Josiah Guest, met with a delegation of workers to discuss terms. But the negotiations were stopped. And then the 93rd Sutherland Highlanders Regiment were called in to disperse the crowd. Shots were fired, workers were killed. But then the colliers fought back. They overturned the army and rioted for three days and nights, burning to the ground the cruel court of requests and all of its records. The event became known throughout history as the Merthyr Uprising. And it is a pivotal moment in the story of not only Wales, but the ever-changing industrial world. When the mob subsided and order was finally restored, word was sent from Westminster that an example must be made to the workers. Further rebellion would never be tolerated. The Home Secretary, Lord Melbourne, granted the strictest punitive measures to the court to publicly hang the ringleaders of this rising. A 23-year-old collier by the name of Richard Lewis, was brought before the courts, accused of having stabbed a soldier in the leg during the uprising. Far from being the ringleader, though, Richard Lewis was a family man, a husband to his loving wife Elizabeth, father to a baby daughter Mary, and with another child on the way. Having been caught up in the furrow of the Merthyr Uprising and with the actual leader of the rebellion, Lucin O'Hellior, having been deported overseas to the penal colony of New South Wales, Richard was sentenced to execution. The Iron Master Joseph Tregellis Price petitioned Parliament to exonerate him, but his voice and that of the people of Wales was not enough to deter the authorities from having their pound of flesh. On the 13th of August, 1831, outside Cardiff jail, Richard Lewis was hanged by the neck until dead. Richard Lewis went on to gain the nickname Dick Penderin, the first Welsh working-class martyr. 
As he faced the gallows on that faithful day, he uttered his last words. O Agloith Damagamwith, O Lord, here is iniquity. It was not until after his death, though, that further evidence came to light which heavily suggested the authorities got the wrong man. A few years after the hanging, a special constable by the name of James Abbott, who was a key witness at the trial of Dick Penderin, confessed that he had lied whilst under oath when giving evidence. Another man by the name of Yanto Parker, whilst on his deathbed in 1847, also confessed to the priest Evan Evans that it was in fact he who had committed the crime for which Dick Penderin was hanged. And yet, still to this day, the name of Richard Lewis is considered guilty in the eyes of the law. It was the sacrifices made by people like Dick Penderin and the other miners that day in Merthyr that we have rights and privileges we enjoy in society today. Lest we forget, it was through solidarity and courage in the face of brutally cruel regimes that brought about this change. In 2017, a tall but born actor and writer, Stuart Broad, decided to embark on writing a new stage play telling the true story of Dick Penderin in a dramatic format. He assembled a team of writers and historians and put together the project. And so, Iniquity Camworth was born. Even through the COVID-19 global pandemic, and after losing suddenly their chief historian, Stefan Apdavid, in 2020, the Iniquity Camworth project grew from strength to strength. A series of free-to-attend workshops were put on whereby ordinary members of the public could come and learn about the story before sourcing or making the props, wardrobe, set, music score and stage crew. Then open auditions were held and attracted a mix of both professional actors and community-based performers working alongside one another to bring to life the world of Iniquity Camworth. Then in July 2021, the world premiere of the stage play was performed at the Princess Royal Theatre in Patalbot, a mere five-minute walk from Penderin's grave, and in doing so became the first indoor theatrical experience performed in Wales post-pandemic. More was yet to come, though. In 2022, after a monumentally ambitious fundraising campaign, the Iniquity Camworth Project returned to its birthplace and opened the Mirtha Rising Arts Festival, all before touring to the largest arts festival in the world and the 75th Edinburgh Festival Fringe. Alongside the production, they have been running their own petition to bestow a royal prerogative of mercy on the name of Richard Lewis, with a posthumous pardon. Upon returning from the fringe, that petition currently stands at 5,000 signatories. Aiming to reach that magical mark of 10,000 and trigger a debate in Parliament, though, the Iniquity Camwith project is not done yet. Discussions are being made with education ministers and leaders in Wales for Iniquity Camwith to be promoted onto the expressive arts area of the national curriculum taking it from the page and onto the stage so that the next generation can learn all about the story of Dick Penderin. The project has also teamed up with Julian James of the Rich History of Wales Society in putting together a feature-length documentary detailing the making of Iniquity Camwith. The next step, though, is by far the most ambitious and exciting. You see, the story of Dick Penderin and the Merthyr Uprising is not one that belongs to the people of Merthyr or Putalbot, not even the people of Wales. It is one that belongs to anyone and everyone who has ever suffered at the hands of oppression and greed. It is for those reasons 
that we are joining forces with the BAFTA winning film director Chris Crow in making Iniquity the movie. Taking this most tragic of stories to a global audience. Work is well underway in putting together the pieces that create a platform for this story which needs to be told. Nothing like this has ever come out of Wales before and you will all want to be a part of this very special project. In years to come, when people talk of Welsh cinema, the first word to leave their lips will be iniquity.